going to be speaking with a very important author, and I say that with all sincerity because he has amassed stories, true stories, of our fighting servicemen from the Second World War, specifically those that fought in aerial combat. The book is called Amazing Airmen. Canadian Flyers in the Second World War, and our guest today is Ian Darling. Ian, I want to welcome you to the show, and thank you for joining us, and thank you sincerely for this book. Well, it's my pleasure to be here, and it was also a pleasure to be able to write this book. That's wonderful. I want to jump in right away, just to tantalize and hook our audience right away. I'd like to talk about the salute, and then I want to discuss it with you after. Can you just give a brief synopsis, synopsis about that particular story? The salute. This was a rather unusual story of um, uh, a German Luftwaffe uh, officer who was going to uh, try to shoot down his uh, third uh, American plane of the day. And uh, he got up to see the plane, and he was then surprised uh, that the plane was in such dreadful condition um, as it was that he thought he couldn't shoot that plane down any more than he could shoot a man uh, in a parachute. So he flew up beside the plane and uh, with hand signals tried to get the plane to, to, to land in Germany and then to land in neutral uh, uh, Sweden and um, the American pilot uh, Charlie Brown did not want to do anything like that at all. Uh, he just carried on and uh, the uh, uh, German Luftwaffe pilot thought that the American was, a, was crazy to continue flying a plane that was uh, so crippled uh, and he then saluted uh, the American uh, crew and flew off and the American crew uh, miraculously survived the trip across the uh, Northern Sea and landed uh, in England. Um, the interesting thing about this story is that uh, many years later uh, Charlie Brown, the American pilot, um, was trying to find the, um, uh, the Luftwaffe pilot and uh, could not track him down through the normal sources. Uh, um, archives, museums, newspaper stories, anything like that, but he did in fact track him down through a Luftwaffe magazine and the, by this time the German pilot had become a Canadian living in Vancouver and uh, he still um, remembered the story and uh, contacted uh, Charlie Brown and uh, they then became great friends and um, almost brothers and uh, visited each other, had holidays together. And uh, this to me is, uh, is a wonderful story because it, it shows uh, hope and reconciliation uh, in a difficult world. For all of us, I think. www.brenthollandshow.com www.brenthollandshow.com Click on the book cover, folks. As always, we'll take you right to a spot online. You can order this book, Christmas is Coming from the comfort of your own home. The name of the book, of course, is Amazing Airmen, Canadian Flyers in the Second World War. Our guest today and its author, Ian Darling. Ian, that's the story that pulled my heartstrings because as you say, there was reconciliation at the end of it. Here are two combatants thrown into this god-awful situation where one has to destroy the other one. Uh, through the grace of God, through the grace of fate it didn't occur and these two men have become like brothers yes it's absolutely astounding and how did you go about because I noticed that there are many stories in here in the book that you talk about what happened to the adversary as well was that a key point when you were writing this book I wanted to be balanced and fair and to describe war the way it really is and um, uh, there, are, there, there were individuals on both sides of, of goodwill who were caught by forces bigger than themselves. And uh, I, I was quite looking for an appropriate uh, German airman with a Canadian connection. And uh, I indeed did find that gentleman. Uh, Franz Stiegler happened to be uh, studying to become a monk before the war. So before the war he was a moral gentleman uh, with, with an ethical... Um, uh, background and he brought that with him and, and this is sometimes uh, not the image of, of Germany in the Second World War you know, uh, rightly and understandably the the government of Germany at the time is is 
strongly, bitterly criticized for its, its Nazi regime. But beneath that uh, regime, there were individuals uh, who were, were not particularly supportive at all of the, of the government in power, uh, but they were individuals um, who were caught by forces bigger than themselves and who had saw themselves as having a job to do. But he had no use uh, for the Nazis and, uh, as I've said, was, it was a very ethical, professional type of, of, of airman. And uh, he certainly showed his, uh, his real spirit by becoming a Canadian after the war because his respect for Canada and the Allies was that great. Folks, this book is chock full of these stories. Um, as I mentioned before, Christmas is coming. These, this would make a great gift. The book is called, of course, Amazing Airmen, Canadian Flyers in the Second World War. The author and our guest today, Ian Darling, www.brenthollandshow.com. Click on the book cover. Order this book. Order this book because it is our living history. And it is a document that will stand the test of time. And it's something that must be told so that we maybe, just maybe, can help prevent the next war and come to an understanding. I guess that's why I really like that story. Because it showed the human face, as all your stories do. It breaks down, as you said, that connotation that we've always been thrown as the evil, evil person. These were just human beings, young kids. Yes. And that's something I want to tell you too, folks. Every story has a photograph attached to it, and this is something I want to ask you about too. A photograph of the young person that tells the, that the story is about, and also where that person is now, 2007, 2008. How did you manage, because I've tried this before with many veterans, <laughs> to get them to open up to tell their stories? And very often I get, no, I can't go back there, I'm having nightmares as it is. How did you do that? It is not always easy. What I did have that I would not normally have as a journalist was time and patience. I did not have a deadline. Um, in one case, the story of Gordon Stacy, who was an evader, I interviewed him 18 times. 18 times. So over the course of these interviews, I could get to know them as, as, as friends, uh, not just as veterans with a story. Uh, they therefore realized that I was not looking for a, a, a quick story to go into the paper that day or the next day, but that I was very serious about researching these stories in, in depth. And I think that helped. The other point that helped too was that the very first story that I wrote was about my uncle. And I wrote that for my paper, The Record in Kitchener. And uh, that was initially going to be the only story I wrote, but people thought that I should carry on. And so uh, from the very beginning, uh, people realized that I had uh, a family connection to the, the air war and that I would uh, treat the veterans, uh, all the veterans, the same way I would treat uh, my, my, uh, my, my relatives. And so they, I think people from that point of view, as well as the time I was prepared to put into it, tended to, to trust me with uh, their, uh, their, their difficult ordeals. Uh, and these were difficult ordeals quite often. Uh, I had the veterans literally in tears as they were telling me not just about their ordeal but about their friends and colleagues who didn't make it. And that was tough for me to listen to and tough for them to say. Uh, but what we tried to do in this war, in this book of war stories, was to describe war the way it really is. And war as it really is mean that uh, Friends and relatives are killed. It is, it is a difficult, difficult time. The book is called, folks, Amazing Airmen. True stories, of course, Canadian flyers in the Second World War. Easy way to get it, as always, www.brenthollandshow.com. Click on the book cover. You can order it from the comfort of your own home. Ian Darling is our guest and the author today. You mentioned your uncle. Let's talk about it. You must be clairvoyant. Because the very next story I was going to ask you to tell was that of Peter Darling. Can you tell that story for us? Well, uh, uh, my uncle was, was George Darling, and my father was Peter Darling. So two relatives are in the book. George Darling was my, was my, was my uncle, and he was the bomb aimer who was, uh, was shot down. That was the first And one. I apologize for that, because I said, okay, I guess I got it wrong. <laughs> 
I thought Peter was your dad. Yeah. And then I, I said, okay, I guess I buggered up here, you know. I, so I apologize yeah. to both. Oh, that's no problem at all. People sometimes are confused about the two. Uh, Peter was my dad, and, and my dad's pe story was a little bit different from the others. My dad was an administrator in the uh, Royal Air Force in, in, in England, and uh, he was going to an air base in West Africa, and on that trip, uh, he was on um, a troop ship, and the troop ship was uh, torpedoed. And my father at that time uh, was in one of the lower decks. And he um, uh, was thrown out of his hammock and uh, broke his leg at a, a, a right angle and uh, was unconscious at first. And uh, when he regained consciousness, was able with just his arms to pull himself uh, the ladder, fearing uh, quite literally that his uh, dreadfully broken leg sticking out at a right angle might get stuck in the rungs of the ladder. He managed successfully to um, get up to the, uh, uh, the main deck and uh, hopped uh, on his one good leg uh, into the Atlantic Ocean and uh, then was sucked down by the, uh, the water, uh, sucking uh, anything down uh, near the bow of the boat. And um, he then came up, uh, managed to get onto a little piece of debris, and waited there until he was uh, was, was, was rescued. And uh, as my dad said, um, uh, the war for him was 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 20 minutes, um, and uh, he was fortunately able to survive and and, and carried on uh, with the Royal Air Force. But uh, even when the fellows were going to air bases, uh, there was no such thing as a as a safe place in war. War is, is, is horrible, and uh, one can be attacked at any time. Absolutely. Folks, of course, the book is called Amazing Airmen. Our guest today, Ian Darling, just told a story about his dad, Peter Darling. Now, I want to ask you, the relationship we had with your dad, did he open up about the war to you, and did that relationship help you in writing this book with the other members? My father previously, like many veterans, had not talked very much about the war in general, and certainly not about his particular uh, ordeal. He started talking more about it during the last five or so, six years of his life. And he was prepared to let me interview him formally uh, for the book. And he had only one interest in um, allowing me to interview him. He wanted his grandchildren to know what war is really like. It was as simple as that. Uh, my father was not very fond of um, the Hollywood image of war. In, in Hollywood, the good guys always live and the bad guys always lose. And uh, there's good guys and bad guys. And my uh, dad always thought that that was um, the wrong way to convey war. War is, is horrible for everybody who's in it. And even on uh, his opponent's side, um, like the, like the, uh, the, the previous uh, flyer uh, that I mentioned, uh, there were, were good individuals. And uh, my dad's uh, tennis partner before the war had been um, a young German fellow who, of course, had to go back to Germany on uh, September the 3rd, 1939. Uh, so my, my dad was well aware that uh, individuals in Germany could be fa trapped by forces bigger than themselves with which they may not individually agree or may not agree wholeheartedly. And, uh, and so he didn't want war seen as uh, simple black and white. He wanted the subtleties seen uh, that on the other side, you may, the war may be necessary from time to time, uh, but it, it is hellish uh, at any time. Make damn sure. You know what you're getting into when you get into it. Exactly. Precisely. Folks, our guest today, Ian Darling, the book is called Amazing Airmen. They're true stories, folks, of our folks during the Second World War, specifically airmen, of course. True stories of Canadians over there and what they went through. Make no mistake, it is unglossed and very real. You'll see the human side. The easy way to get it is always www.brenthollandshow.com. Just click on that book cover. We'll take you right to a spot where you can get this book online. Do get the book. Christmas is coming. Not only do you owe it to your siblings, your grandchildren, you owe it to yourself to read this book. Because once again, these are the true stories of the folks that sacrificed 
so much of their youth to go over there so we can sit back and have a beautiful, safe Christmas right here at home. I want to talk to you some more. There's a very interesting story in there, something I had never read before in books like this, and that is the story of, I was going to say, the Secret Service in Paris, um, Fifi. She was involved with the resistance. And that really brought a new dimension for me. Can we talk about that story, sir? Yes. Um, Gordon Stacy uh, was happy to uh, talk to me because he really wanted me to be able to describe uh, the bravery of the people in the resistance. And um, a woman um, in, um, in, uh, in Belgium, uh, Mabel Freypoint, who went by the code name Fifi during the war, had protected him in her house uh, despite the risk to her personally. In some ways, in many ways, uh, members of the resistance, men and women uh, in Europe, were at much greater risk than the uh, Canadian, American, and, and British, and Australian uh, allied airmen who were shot down. Uh, the Germans, uh, to give them credit, had great, usually, usually had respect for the uniform worn by the allied airmen, and usually, not always, but usually, um, tried to treat them according to the Geneva Convention and, and relatively humanely. No, the, the Germans, however, did not give any such treatment to members of the resistance. Members of the resistance caught helping the, the Allies in, in any way uh, risked um, uh, being arrested, um, tortured, imprisoned, or death. Um, Gordon Stacy, who spent uh, months uh, as, a, as an evader and successfully evaded the, the Germans, uh, was always in awe of the courage of the resistance, and particularly the, 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 the woman who had protected him. And, and that was his uh, uh, personal incentive for um, um, allowing me to interview him, and I did indeed in, in, interview him in, in some depth. I had a, a total of 18 interviews with him, so he certainly knew what an extensive uh, uh, set of interviews could be required, and he never complained about one single interview. He just wanted me to do my best to tell the story of the, the men and women in the resistance. There you go, folks. This book, like I said before, <laughs> is chocked full. Chocked full. You're laughing. <laughs> You're having your memory, are you? Well, it's, <laughs> Share uh, it with us. I, 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 um, uh, I, 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 I think 18 um, interviews for one um, chapter in a book uh, probably qualifies for um, uh, some, some type of, of, of record of interviews. And uh, I, I, on one level, I, I, I sort of apologize to, to Gordon for the constant number of, of interviews I had with him. Uh, but at the other side of the coin, uh, the more serious side of that is that we did everything we possibly could to get every detail. And if it took 18 interviews, uh, I was willing to give the time. And, uh, and, and, and Gordon was willing to give the time, too. So uh, we did try to get the facts. Well, I believe that detail shows up in the book. And by the way, folks, the book we're talking about is Amazing Airmen. And it's a true story of Canadian flyers in the Second World War. Easy way to get it, as I keep saying, www.brenthollandshow.com. The author and our guest today, Ian Darling. I want to talk some more about that um, relationship. Did you change? Whenever somebody embarks on a quest like this to write a book of this magnitude of this emotion did you change from the beginning to the end did your perspective change i think i now have a deeper understanding and appreciation of the complexity of the Second World War. Like most people, I knew a lot of Canadians and Allied airmen were shot down, and I knew about D-Day, and I knew about Dieppe. Uh, like most people, I had what we might call a, 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 a sort of a scattered idea of, of, of history. Uh, but I've come to realize that 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 is just uh, almost uh, um, uh, just an outline of, of what happened and beneath it were a great deal more uh, facts that I didn't previously think about um, a lot more on an emotional level uh, one of the fronts of the war that we tend for example not to think very much about 
is the, fr is the, the home front and the parents. Um, in a way, I think the parents emotionally suffered more than most of the airmen suffered emotionally. Now the airmen, of course, if they were killed, that's tragic and horrible. And if they were injured, that's, that's horrible too. But at an emotional level, I think it would be harder to be a mom and dad here in Canada or in the United States or Britain and not know whether a son was alive than to be the son, such as Gordon Stacy, who knew all the time that he was alive. And um, that is something that I realized. Uh, in my dad's case, I learned from my father that my grandparents, his mom and dad, were told that he was dead. That he had been killed while on active service. I had not known that detail, so to some extent this broadened my understanding for, of the, the, the pain of war, that it goes far beyond uh, the battlefield, far beyond uh, uh, a casualty, far beyond uh, a broken leg. It can go all the way home to parents who cannot know for months and months and months and perhaps even years whether a son is alive. And when I wrote this book, um, in a way, I understood it more from the point of view of the parents than I did from the point of view of the young airmen because I guess I was in my 50s when I wrote it, which is the age of most of the mums and dads in the book. So uh, I was a wee bit past the, uh, the age of the, the airmen in the book in their early 20s, and I very much related uh, to that. So that, that depth of feeling is something that I um, had not previously thought about, and it just makes me more aware that uh, uh, warfare goes far, far beyond uh, the battle scene, it, it goes into the, the hearts and minds of people uh, literally thousands of kilo kilometers away. Absolutely. Folks, our guest today and the author of the book we're discussing, Ian Darling, the name of the book, of course, is Amazing Airmen, Canadian Flyers in the Second World War, www.brenthollandshow.com. Click on the book cover, get this book. Order it from the comfort of your own home. We only have one last question for you, Ian. Imagine yourself standing in a podium with virtually every university student across Canada and as well the world because the show's on the internet as well. People download the show as well. What would you say to them? Well, I think the message that comes out of the stories that the airmen told me, not so much that uh, this is my message, but their message, I think, is that uh, never give up uh, whatever um, difficult situation uh, you might run into. Uh, there have been uh, many men and women who faced as difficult, if not more difficult challenges, and uh, with a combination of uh, uh, a little bit of luck and, and, and a bit of hard work, um, y you can, you can su survive exceedingly difficult situations. Uh, so people's challenges today may be different. It, it, it might be uh, um, a particularly difficult course. It might be a social problem. It might be a job-related problem. Um, whatever problems uh, we have, and I include myself uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in this uh, category, whatever problems in life we have, uh, they're probably um, not uh, as difficult as some of the challenges that these fellows faced uh, in, in the war itself, uh, not knowing whether they might be uh, killed or, or captured uh, within minutes or hours. And so these fellows all survived and uh, most of them went on to be able to put the war behind them in perspective and to be thankful that they had survived and to be thankful for for life and the the peace uh, that we 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 have today uh, in North America uh, and, and so that that is my uh, my belief that the message that the the veterans wanted to convey through their stories to me uh, to younger people to to carry on continue to never give up 
Ian Darling, I want to thank you for coming on the show today and telling about your book. And I also want to thank you for your book. Folk once, folks, once again, the book, Amazing Airmen, Canadian Flyers in the Second World War. Our guest has been and the author, Ian Darling. Thank you, sir. Thank you.